Yeah, so when you when you log in, this starting the, the chat with talking about network things is just wonderful. Um, but when you log in directly to when you that little window pops up and you log into the computer, you get access to the network. If you don't log into the computer, you get access to the computer and internet, but not network. So just if if you aren't connected to the network drives, you on this PC you only see the C drive. Then just you go to Canvas on the assignment and you can download the files. Um, I got to make it. Hmm? Uh, iDrive and the Steve Weiner folder. I, it's a instructor files. That's what it's called. Yeah, and I scroll all the way down. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, so I'm going to go to my Google Drive really quickly and get my Canvas. I downloaded to my Google Drive because this my laptop's not connected to the network. Wait for it. Internet's a little pokey because I'm streaming. New Jersey. And then download. Really efficient use of technology. Open up New Jersey. Okay. So Let's what about see. Can't log in? I put it on Canvas. So if you yeah, go I got that, but I have every state on there. Yeah. Oh, then you open up the master list. Yeah, so you can use that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's the same exact steps, whatever state. You just get to see all the states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As opposed to having 8,000 subjects, you have 726,000 subjects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just takes a little longer to make your graphs. <laughs> okay. So this is the frustrating part is that SPSS does not like touchscreen. Okay. So now, why, how come I'm not looking at the data view? I, I can't read the data view. There's, it's too much. It's too much even to read on the variable view. So what, I, what you need to do is, the first thing we want to do is you have to describe your data. So the easiest way to describe your data is just to make a simple histogram. Which histogram should you make right off the bat? What histogram? What's the first histogram you should make right off the bat just to describe how many subjects you have and who are they? What is, what's the first one that I made? Not age. Age is categorical and ordinal on this data set. Box plot. Where is your label? Did you click on data view or variable view? Yeah, so I, what I did is I, I did this automatically. Maybe I didn't, you didn't see me do it. Does it look like, does it look like that? Yeah, yeah. I just, I get, I get so used to doing things. Like, you notice how I just dragged that column so I could make it bigger so I could see it? And I do that kind of stuff all the time, and I don't even notice that I'm doing it. And the students go, how did you do that? I'm like, do what? <laughs> I didn't do anything. But I, I do that all the time. Like, whenever you open a text box... Like, so, but the graph, let's make a histogram first so we can just get a picture of our data, okay? So I'm going to go to graph, legacy dialogues, old menus, and histogram, okay? Okay, just waiting. So notice it's too small to see, so I always just grab the corner and make it bigger. The only thing that we ever do with this is we check the box for normal curve and we put a variable in here. It's the only thing we ever use histograms for. Do not put any crap in here. People always want to. Please don't. We, in pie charts, we put things in rows and columns, not histograms. Histograms, you want to show one variable, frequency, that's it. Don't get fancy. People try to do stuff all the time. So. Which kind of variable can I make a histogram out of? Continuous variables. The only continuous variables in this data set are height, weight, and BMI. That's it. Everything else is categorical. Height, weight, and BMI. 
So you could choose any one of those three. Which one is, should be normally distributed? Height. height. So put height in there, and it'll give you a nice picture of what your data looks like. Does the pen work? Oh, the pen works. Height in meters. Display, display, display normal curve. Uh, just do it again. Yeah. There's a way to add the display normal. Once you, you can click on the graph and edit it and add the curve, but I don't know how. Oh, okay. Yeah, but if you mess with it, you could. So what does this tell me? What does the graph tell me? Close. Why won't that close? That's stupid. Okay. This is the important part. It tells me the average student height is. Who's got different states in here? Okay, what's yours? Hawaii. Hawaii. What's the average height? Uh, 1.66, okay? Uh, start, just start shouting them out. 1.70. Well, ooh, tall state. Mine's also 1.71. Yeah, that one. 1.71. All right, better than yours. Anybody higher than 1.71? <laughs> Anybody shorter than 1.66? Someone's got to have Arizona. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyone? Okay. So, no, that's good though, because then, so, how come each state's a little bit different? Hmm. Okay, so well, could we figure out why one state's taller than another state? I grew up on a dairy farm. I'm tall. Anecdote. Do people who drink milk? Let's see. Why don't you find out what percentage of people drink milk at your state? How can I find out what percentage of people drink milk? I'm going to make a graph and a pie chart. But the pen's really sketchy. I'm not going to use that. Yeah, I'm going to use the mouse. Graph, pie chart, nothing fancy. Make the stupid box bigger so I can read the words. What word am I looking for? Milk. Milk. HIV testing, soda dress, dry, soda dressing, tater eating. No. Nope. Oh, no milk drinking. Yeah, it would be nice if there was a better search function, but there isn't. Multiple sex part? No. Um, anybody find the number? Condoms? No. Weight loss, fruit juice, salad. No milk drinking. There's a. There's actually one. There should be. Yeah. So I think let's look at let's look at the no milk drinking seventy seven, and then let's see. Oh, sad and hopeless. Yeah, that's a good one. Currently binge drinking, but probably not milk. Yeah. Okay. Let's just use the no milk drinking because that'll just give us a window into the milk drinking. Okay. So it's question 77. They're in order so you can scroll down. Please notice that there is these QN questions as well. So if I go down to QN 77, what is it about? So the QN, when it says QN, those are dichotomous variables. One is Yes, two is no. It takes the categorical variable and makes it into dichotomous variables for different kinds of analyses. Have her drag, can she grab the corner and drag it? Yep, the number question 77. The question, it's actually milk drinking is the, but it, for some reason it says no milk drinking instead.
We're gonna look. We're gonna look. Some, there's some more. more. Because QN77 is a dichotomous version of Q77. Okay. So the reason why they they code the variables differently, you can make both graphs and see which what they look like. They, if they look exactly the same, they code the they code the variables so that you can use them for analysis. Um, a lot of research that you see, like, like on TV, uses this data. Like, well, America is becoming more obese. Well, this is the data they use to show that. Okay. So, this is the variable that I that I wanted you to use. It's question seventy-seven. Our counts or percentage is better for this data. Why? There's way too many people in the data set. Right, so put the, put the percentage on there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to ask if Grandpa's getting the kids today. Huh. I haven't heard any complaints, so I assume he did. Oops. I hate being in charge of carpool. Does it have the percentages? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, do we make, do we find it? Anybody struggling? Back row, you okay? Okay, so. Can I click on it? Yeah, like, there's two different questions. Like, no, multiple. So this is the end. Yeah. Yeah. But so you're just you're just seeing okay. this slice, and then all this is the other slice. That's how they do that. Okay. This is really bothering me. I feel so bad for the poor whiteboard. Doesn't that bother anybody in here? It's like got a big blister in the whiteboard, so it's like whiteboard function doesn't work over here. I just want to help it. It just makes me sad. Okay. I spent a lot of time caring for whiteboards. Okay. So it's Carla, is it Carla, right? Or Clara, sorry. So you're you can easily get get got through this. This is easy for you to follow. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Okay. <laughs> That's actually the hard part. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. We'll see how many can answer the question that I'm gonna ask. Okay?
We should have people put on two little tiny circles in their glasses and have them see what you see when you're trying to do this. No, because I had Lizeth also had really bad, she was blind completely in one eye and the other eye was just a small because she had really bad glaucoma. And um, she said it's like, she goes, she put a piece of paper over my glasses and put this one little hole in it. They go, okay, there you go. And it's, and so I totally, I totally understand what it's like. Well, I mean, I don't really, but I mean, I, I have a much better clue. Okay, so you double click on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you double click on it. That was three. You click three times. Okay, yeah. So this little box right over here. I don't know. So is that quick? Oh, okay. So click double click one more time. Okay. So now, see this right here, this little box that pops up? There's up in the, I don't know if you can see these right here, right there. That the value label. Click on that. And then see this, go so back on this way. See where it says percent? Oh, okay. Right there, so click that. And then, yeah, drag it up. Perfect. And then I'll hit apply. That's, that's okay. Because it's off the side of the screen. Yeah. Okay, and then just close. Close and then you can close that box. Yep. yep. And now they're on your ground. Okay. Okay. You're good. Okay. I want to hear a quick report. I have in New Jersey, 21% of people say I don't drink milk. What else do we got from different states? What do you got? You go. Oh, 21.7 from Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 12.7. Okay, what do you got? 21.8. Okay, 21 again. And Hawaii, 27.7. 27 when you get to Hawaii. Oh, sorry. Stole your Hawaii thunder, yeah. 15 in Colorado? 22 in Florida. 25 in New York. Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> okay. I grew up on a dairy farm. I have respect. Okay. Four glasses of milk a day. 8.5%. You're Idaho, ain't you? Yeah. Three. I got four. Five. What state is 5%? We, oh, we, that surprised me. Five uh, percent in Arizona. Five percent in Arizona. I got five percent in Florida. Five percent in Florida. Yeah. So, okay, so what we're looking at is I, if I ask a question, who drinks milk? Who's the people who tend to drink milk? So we have some who variables. Well, we don't. We didn't ask about lactose intolerance. No, I, when I was lactose intolerant, I still drank milk because I grew up on milk. I just have issues. Moving on. Okay. Milk's good. Okay. So, what are the who's? Okay, so let's see. Can we make, a, make the same graph? Well, careful. Don't just make the same graph. That's boring. But now, what are we going to panel it by? So now we put something in those boxes. <laughs> Same exact pie chart, we're going to add information to it. Yeah, go to graph, and then you're going to add, we're going to panel it. What did I add? Male and female. Who's more likely to be lactose intolerant, males or females? I really don't know the answer to that. Okay. Same thing. Same graph, we're just going to add a layer to it now. That's just, just that. Oh. Male, it's, it's sex, male, female, right near the top. No, higher up. 
One equals male, two equal, one equals female, two equals male. Can you find it? Yes. Choose them ones near the top are easy. Down the bottom, you get lost in the scroll. Yeah, put in the rows. Yeah, or if you do columns, it comes out side to side. It's okay, it's all good. It does not like the touch screen, which is frustrating. I just am doing that right this second. I really want a glass of milk right now. No Oreos. Bad for you. Yucko. Okay. I can't. I don't eat that stuff. Okay. Holy moly, I've just discovered the secret of why women are short. 27% of women in New Jersey don't drink milk. Well, then, maybe that's the reason women are shorter than men. <gasps> Wait, 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 what percentage of males drink milk? 6.5, girls, 2.5. But what kind of, is this just like milk? Like, from a cow? You can squeeze it out of any animal you want to, but yes, cow milk. No, like cat milk with a little milkers in it. Okay, sorry, if you're... <laughs> what movie is that from? Meet the Parents? C3, okay, sorry. That's a funny movie. Okay. Okay. Again, so we have to, we, this is, we only can answer the questions. Calm down your milk, people. Okay. So, so this is a, this is an interesting question to me because we can start adding another layer to this. You have to be careful, though, because the more layers you add, what happens? Well, the po we have the lucky thing about this data is I've got eight thousand people in New Jersey to study, so I can make this thinner. But so, what if I ask the same thing over different ethnicities? Males and females definitely do look different. There's males tend to looks like they drink more milk than females in general. Well, it turns out we have that information. A lot of people from Latin, and actually a lot of people with Latinx don't drink milk because a lot of Latinx people are from southern parts of the country in the world. People don't drink milk south of the equator, around the equator, because. It goes bad really quickly. So unless you're having fresh milk, fresh out of the cow, you're not drinking milk. No, it doesn't. It's good. Well, you got to cool it down a bit first. When it's still warm, it's a little bit nasty. But <laughs> Moving on. Okay. So let's look. Let's look, at, let's look at our Latinx populations. We have that data. So I'm going to make a pie chart again. Yeah, we happen to have a variable of called race. A lot of Latinx people don't drink milk. It's not because of lactose intolerance. It's just because they just don't drink milk. No, but there's a lot of but a lot of Mexican food does have cheese, and the kind of cheese that's more southern Mexico is not. It's more like Parmesan and feta than actual. Yeah, the good. It's not like cheddar. It's, it's, you know, cheddar and mud, and that's all American crap, but it's like the good hard cheeses that they come around the Mediterranean, like feta, because the only way to preserve it is to salt it and let it, let the moisture wick out. Yeah, it stinks when you're making it, but mmm, I want, the, I'm having tacos for dinner tonight, so I'm stoked. Okay, <laughs> every night is taco night. Okay, so I am going to find race. Where's race? Okay, so there's, this is the first problem. There's two levels of race that we talk about. There's two levels of race because we can, we can make both, but why is four better than seven? Too many slices mean too small a slices, which means too small a group. With a million subjects like we have, we can easily do seven, but it's hard to read all the graphs. So we'll do four right now. 
leave the females and males there because maybe Latinx males and females are different. So we should put them in, so put it into columns. If you want to switch it around, you can. It doesn't matter. So you grab the corner down here. Oh, I can show you that in a sec. Just move the move the just move them around back and forth. Yeah, so I just literally grabbed it and then moved it up. Well, I tried to. There you go. And then you can move it. Up. Okay. Yeah, I'm just showing her how to move them back and forth. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. That was an excellent stat size for me. <laughs> So I'm going to make this a little bigger because it's kind of clumpy on the little mic. This screen's not very big, and the touch screen doesn't work for that. I'm just going to grab the corner of the graph and make it bigger so we can look at it. So I'm going to suggest... Let me put this on here. I'm not going to put all the percentages on there because will that get really complicated really fast? Yeah, it gets real complicated really fast. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to make a statement. I did we all get it? I don't want to keep rushing ahead, but did we get it? Are you guys actually learning stuff? Yeah. Woohoo! Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you. Okay. Which, okay, what group of people in your state are least likely to drink milk? I am looking for the largest blue slice. My largest blue slice is right here. That's because they're too small, so you have to make it bigger. And they'll, so, I, it's too much. You, yeah, it's too much. If you, I can show you how to make a chart that puts it in a table. That's, but you don't need to see it. We're just looking at detail. You did the seven. Yeah. Yeah, so yours just came out the other way. It, it, it doesn't change the numbers. It just changes the orientation. Yeah. Okay, so in, my, in New Jersey, African-American females are le least likely to drink milk. White and Hispanic Latinos are... Well, in, in, I'm talking New Jersey because that's where I am. It looks like... Females from these three are exactly the same. So if you were Puerto Rican, which is the standard type of Latinx in New Jersey, what about Florida? What do we do? We, do we get this? You got good. You have Florida? Oh, what do you have? Okay, never mind. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. What else? What other states do we get? So more so the the people that drink the least milk are black African American females, right? See how I changed the way it said that so it makes sense? Yeah, yeah. moving on. Okay, <laughs> it's hard to speak statistics. Okay, what else? So what? Uh, look at the males. Are they pretty much the same except for? Okay, what's, what's yours? What's Hawaii? <laughs> the females drink the least milk? Okay. Okay, what else? What else states we got? Who drinks the least milk in your got to be white people because that's the only people in the white house. <laughs> the African-American male. And I, if you actually look at the frequencies, 
Idaho is actually really embarrassing as a state if you're looking for cultural diversity. Um, I can put this up here for New Jersey. Let me just hit reset here and just put... Make, if you just make this graph, this is New Jersey. This is the 8,000 people in New Jersey. Most people in New Jersey are... Sorry. Touch, I keep thinking the touch screen should work, but it doesn't. What does the population New Jersey look like? White. Can you make this graph for Idaho? It's actually kind of funny when you make it for Hawaii or if anybody opened Alaska. It's very different. Is yours say processing? Just a pie chart of four-level race? No. Just put the four level race as defined slices by. Yeah, Hawaii's all purple. Because? All other, because mostly Hawaiians. <laughs> huh, weird. So which population do you think is most likely to be lactose intolerant? African Americans. African Americans are much more likely to be lactose intolerant than any other culture. And as a result, why do you think they drink less milk? Because they're lactose intolerant. So it should be close to 50-50, but... What, what percent black versus white? How many African American people in Idaho? Um, for female, 0.6%. <laughs> so one African American female doesn't drink milk in Idaho, and 80% of the women don't drink milk in Idaho. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's just funny. Okay. There's a really great comedian who goes around the United States and he spends uh, six weeks living in the whitest communities in the United oh, States. Yeah. And he's, he's African American. It's hilarious because he's like, he goes, my journey through white topia. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and it's, and he goes, I've learned to play golf. That's, that's what he brought home from this experience. Golf. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exercise what's called aversive racism, is that a lot of people who are racist but don't want to be actively racist just avoid other cultures. And so you cluster together with your culture and say, well, we're not racist, we just live in Idaho. But do you let other people move in? No, we don't rent to different ethnicities. But we're not racist, we just don't let them move in. Yeah. And so, they, so it becomes white-topia because everybody's white, and so everybody thinks everything's fine and there's no racism because there's no racial diversity. <laughs> and it's, I think when you go around this campus, you start to see we have a lot of racial diversity, right? Oh. And when you, when you have lots of racial diversity, people stop paying attention as much to your race and get to know who you are. When there's no racial diversity, people judge you much faster based on your race. Interesting. So... Again, so could we find, so when, just going back to this, is anybody find something different than black or African American with the, did anybody find Hispanic Latinx not drinking a lot of milk? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's second, but not. Oh, the, okay. That was very scientific. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> but again, so when we look at this, you can start digging deeper and deeper and deeper into the data. And the nice thing is, if you open up what it, it's called the master list, or like if I switch back to the computer, where it says 2000 national data, that's the entire population of the United States. I mean, it's a million subjects in the national data. Now, it's fun to play with that data because you start looking for stuff. 
And once you start looking for things, you can then break it apart into smaller and smaller chunks. Because we have so much data, you can narrow down. You can select cases, is what we're going to teach you to do next week. You're going to select cases. I can look at African-American females in New Jersey and get rid of all the other subjects and just have that population and describe that population. Or you can look at Hispanic Latinos. Are Hispanic Latinos the same in Arizona as they are in Colorado? Well, you can find out because you can look about the way that they act and they answer questions. Okay, so there's one other factor that we need to add to this to make it perfect. Ooh, age. Bef aside from ethnicity, do we, do we really need to pay attention to ethnicity? Now, the only thing that's really different are African-American females. The rest of them are pretty close to the same. Okay, and so let's just kind of ignore ethnicity right now. And let's see, does milk drinking change over age? Well, did you make it already? Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, who should drink more milk? Babies. Little babies should drink milk. No, well, they're not a pain in the ass. They're wonderful little things. When they're 16, they're a pain in the asses. Dad, can I have more money? Okay. There are two ways of measuring age. There is... Okay, listen carefully. I'm going to use fancy language, and I walked away from the computer when I did it. Okay. There are two measures of age. Okay, there's two measures of age. The first measure is a ordinal categorical variable. But the variables are nominal. Ooh. Which means a 1 equals less than 12. A 7 equals 18 plus. You see how they did that? So if you average it, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Well, the average age in my data set is 5. <laughs> what does a 5 mean? Well, 1 is 12, so 2 is 13, 3 is 14, four, so 16. <laughs> it's complicated to try and figure that out. But if, what if we did, we're going to use this one because that is their age. But what about this one? They're great in school. Why would I have a 12-year-old in high school? These are all high school kids. What do you think that 12-year-old looks like if he's going to high school? I'm going to say a big 12-year-old. Well, there's, think of, so the sixth grade class that's coming into Pershing right now, because my son is growing ridiculously fast, he goes, all these like kids look like little tiny children. I'm like, dude, you look like that when you came in. To no, I was never that small. Dude, you were that small. And he's like, no way. And it's just like, so I showed a picture of him on the first day of sixth grade. And he's this tiny little child walking through the gate. And he's like, no. And he's 5'7 now. And just thumping around with his big floppy feet. But so if he, when he goes to height, when he goes to Patrick Henry to watch volleyball games with us and we force him to, he, he, um, he's just as big as half the freshmen. But so if he went to high school now, he would actually be taller than a lot of the freshman boys. Why are all the freshman girls noticing him as a seventh grader? He looks more manly than all the other little people he stands around because of the, the great change. His voice is doing all sorts of crazy things right now. It's amazing. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to put the slices in here. So I'm going to put define slices by their age. Is this going to work? Hmm. Wait, wait. So that means I'm going to each slice represents how old they are. Is that what I want to show? No, what do I want to show? I don't want to show their grade. I want to show the milk. Question 77. So this, this is why you think about these. The nice thing about SVSS, if you screw it up, you delete it and do it again. No big penalty, no failure. 
But again, so I'm thinking, okay, I want to see who drinks milk, and I want to panel it by the different ages. Do I, I don't really need to do male and female. You think I should do male and female? I think male and female you should do. We, should, we don't need to do ethnicity. So I'm going to have two columns. Two columns, one male, one female, and then seven rows. That's, that's going to be ugly. Should I switch it around? Two rows, seven columns? That sounds a lot better. You can make it both ways if you want. So you, you can change it around however you want. It's so tiny. So I'm going to make this bigger so we can look at it. And again, do you think this is too much information? A little bit. Yes, no, do not put the percents when you have this many little slices. Who drinks a lot of milk? Babies. Not in Idaho. <laughs> Idaho's a unique space. Oh, you're th you have 13? In New Jersey? In Hawaii? What do we got? So I just changed which row and column I put it in. So just you can try it either way. Whatever looks better. Whenever you have a time sequence, it's better to put time in columns. Not in New Jersey. 13 old males do, though. Yeah. Yeah, I found 13 year old males also all drink milk. It's, it, that's a different state, it's a different population. Milk was not indigenous to Hawaii until uh, Cook showed up. And not even until years after that when Cook brought a freaking cow over that, that they actually start. I, there is a dairy farm, but they have goat farms on Maui, but I don't think they have a dairy farm. I don't think there are any cows. Hey, Google, are there any cows on Maui? According to Maui Magazine, oh. about a third of the yeah, 5, they do grow beef. And, but they, okay, but... Yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> okay. What happens with milk drinking as females transcend puberty? So the look at 13-year-old females, a lot of them say I don't drink milk, but this population, these are high school kids. What percentage of high school kids are in, are 13 in high school? It's not a very large N. Even out of 8,000 subjects, it's not a large N. So these are all completely random in a lot of your data sets. I mean, look at this one. I mean, that's probably not very many people. I used to drink at least that when I was growing up. Okay, but I'm, all, but I'm also a foot taller than everybody else in my family. So that could have something to do with it. <laughs> my son right now is asking for a Coke. He, has, he, goes, he, he, has, he has this like serious addiction to high fructose corn syrup, and so we're not allowed to have it in the house. And so he's like, Dad, I need a Coke. Red can, need a Coke. Hey, Google, text Caleb Weiner. Text Caleb Weiner. Sure. What's the message? Drink milk. I got drink milk. Do you want to send it or change it? Send it. Okay. Message not sent. Oh, I have to unlock it. Okay. So now, 
But look at the look at the look at females. Once they turn 14, 14 to 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, what happens with the amount of women that are not drinking milk? Do yours get bigger? Yes. So this again, could this be cultural? It could be cultural. It could be. There's a lot of other factors. Um, I want you to make one more, just for fun. There's what would be the opposite of drinking milk? Don't say not drinking milk. No, water's not. Water's good for you too. Soda. There's a characteristic of soda drinking. Could you go back up in time here and look at the other graphs and make change milk drinking to? Yeah, I want this one with soda drinking. Yeah, make a new one. Oh, it's the same graph, just you're going to use it, as opposed to the question 77, you're going to be using question, don't know the number of soda drinking. No, you're just going to make a new one down at the bottom. Just replicate this graph, but change milk to soda. Oh, soda pop. Excellent. Midwestern shines in. Yep, male and female, ethnicity, and soda. Not QN soda, I want the Q soda. What number? One? Question 76. Excellent observational skills. It, the, it says no soda drinking. Not age, we want ethnicity. I can't wait to see what soda drinking in New Jersey looks like. A four level race. I, I really hate the term race, and so I tried, I don't use it. I try to say ethnicity just because race is literally the color of your skin. And judging people based on their color of their skin is very barbaric and lame. But it will, it's what we do, but it's just not good. Oh, I have in the wrong columns. Oh, well, it's fine. It's a little weird looking this way. You just change what you put rows and columns. Just. Yeah, wine. <laughs> hmm? In Hawaii? No, it's, well, <laughs> well, it's a culture thing because if, if, if you don't have well, if you don't have water that you put that doesn't taste good, you put stuff in it. Yeah. Well, you do put alcohol with everything. Well, that's what. So the sailors in the old days drank alcohol with everything. They had a glass of wine with everything that they ate and drank because the alcohol and the wine killed whatever bacteria was what they were eating, and they didn't die. That's why they drink wine with everything. And, and so the sailors, when they came across, they drank, they, they, they carried the water in the ship, and every, they got a jar, a bottle of wine and a bottle of water every day. And if you, and this, if you ever go down southern Mexico and your, don't, your stomach doesn't speak Spanish, just have a, sh a drink, every, a shot every time you're eating or drinking anything, you'll never have any problems. Yeah, but yeah, that's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of that's a, an old old medicinal thing is you take a shot of tequila before you go to sleep. And it does. It's the same thing as mouthwash, except it tastes like an old sock. But 
I mean, but at the same time, is it that a lot of the cultural traditions have have lineage that goes back a long time? But, I mean, we were we were in Mexico for our tenth wedding anniversary years ago, and we were pretty much drinking the whole time. But and we took off one day, and we both got sick because <laughs> we were just kind of done drinking. Uh, in Cabo, not really Mexico, just Cabo, which is good for the recording. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, I'm not really seeing anything really exciting about the soda drinking. Are you guys seeing soda drinking excitement? No. I see a lot of females, a lot of females of other races tend, in mine and white people tend to not drink soda a lot. But everybody else seems to be the same. Um, do you think soda drinking changes between freshman and senior year of high school? We well, keep saying that. I want you to answer the question, not just answer the question. Yes. So I'm going to get rid of male and female, and I'm going to put in freshman through senior. Yeah, absolutely. You can always do what you want to do. I did. I made it way too complicated. That's okay. That's a lot. I might, I might drop race out of this and just look at, yeah. it's pretty even across except for white people. Yeah. yeah, I'll get rid of that. That's the nice thing is if you're having to do this stuff by hand, would you want to just make a mistake? Yeah. No, because you're calculating. Think about what, the, think about what doing this with a, with a paper and pencil would be like. 8,000 things and 60 columns wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there's actually a thing called the chart builder, where you can actually just move things around and move, but you can easily screw that up. This way is a lot easier. And just you, can, all the graphs are all the graphs that I've ever made are up in this little level on the side. Okay. Thank you for adding the in Arizona part. That makes it real. Okay, so I'm just going to make a quick little graph, and I purposely did it fast enough so you not so you couldn't see it and follow along. Unless you are watching and follow it along. Um, question. Hold on. No, I just made this little graph. Okay, and what this little graph is of uh, is this little score thing called BMI. What is BMI? Right, body mass index is the scale of the mass that you're carrying around with you, body mass. Um, it's basically a measurement of your volume. So the higher your body mass index, like mine right now is 31. I calculated this morning. Um, and so at 31, I am, I think, I think I'm obese still. I think I have to get down to 219 before I officially just become overweight. I weigh 232 pounds right now. So I'm still, I'm working my way down to becoming less obese, but whatever. So, but wait a second. So what is the average of, hey Google, what's the average obesity of the American child? I can search the web for that. Ah, sure. Just tap the search chip below. Okay. Um, the average obesity for United States is right between 22 and 23. So do most people fit that national average? That's what's considered normal as far as normal weight. So is this the so 23 and a half right here? And there's 22. That's where most people should be in that bracket. What do you notice about people who drink four or more sodas a day? Well, they're just above normal. So are there, are there, gra are there 
does their range, put it this way, does their range go into the normal? Yeah, but in statistics, what we can do is we can calculate the percentage of them that is not normal. That's one of the things we'll learn how to do. And one of the things that you'll start to see is that, now we're not talking a huge amount of obesity. We're talking about just a little bit. But this is, but this is just all high school kids. Who, which, which age population in high school is at risk for developing health problems as a result of obesity? 18-year-olds. Okay, so, so what we can start to do is this graph, this one starts to draw conclusions. So like this, the other one that I, I'm, I, we're going to talk about and do is this one, and these are very simple graphs. Let me just put this one up here. What do we see about milk drinking? It's a little different though, because look at the shape of it. A little different than soda drinking. Not drinking milk seems to have higher obesity. Drinking two glasses a day tends to have lower obesity. Drinking four or more glasses a day, well, you're just overeating anyway, so whatever. Okay, and one more. Well, let me put this one on here. 95 percentile. It's a 95 percent of the scores fall around that zone. Okay. Um, what do you notice about people who drink four or more glasses of milk a day? So maybe our Latinx population might be shorter because well, they do drink milk. We just did the math. They drink the same amount of milk as everybody else. Just because. No. <laughs> well, so what, am I, what I'm doing now is I'm having fun with this, because I love messing with this. But let me just put the race level up here. Oh. So maybe this is because of milk drinking or maybe it's because of something else. Well, yeah, it's obvious. There's, there's, there's a lot of different reasons why. But, but so it's interesting. To me, what's fascinating about this is, is going from making these really fun little pie charts, then you start making exp ex conclusions. All right, you guys are fried and done. I get it. Okay. Right, so this one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to turn this in on Monday. We're going to work on this on Monday in class. So okay, not, I know that was supposed to be this, but we didn't get as far as we wanted to. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild, or if you want to save these somewhere, you can find it. We're going to, we're going to write a paragraph to write a conclusion about what you found. So we have to take, and this is, we're looking over here, we have to take the graphs and make a cogent sentence out of what they say. That's why I'm looking over there, because he said some great stuff, but it didn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, so how do you save this so you can find it again? Okay, so I'm just going to click save. I'm going to save it as an SPSS file. And again, it likes to save it in random places. So where should you save it? Desktop. Desktop. Okay, and I'm going to save it as, well, what is the name of this file? Yep. Steve. And what would you what would you save it as? Clyde of the Chance of Meatballs. Steve. Gummy bears. Mustache. Okay. Tan. That's my favorite one. I'm gonna call it lab it's actually lab three. But lab three. Why save it as your name? So no one else will find it. 
Just go to on the output where the graphs are, just click save. Yep. Yeah, email it to yourself, or if you have access to the network drive, you can save it. I'll come back and help because I've got lots of panic looking face back there, so I'll come back. Okay, let me stop the recording so it doesn't just record.